Hello, my name is Byron Grossnickel and I'm with the Advanced Technology Group with IBM. And today I'm going to be talking to you about converting Global Mirror and Global Mirror with change volumes to policy-based replication. Policy-based replication uh, came into uh, being in the 8.5 dot two code. However, the first long-term support release to support policy-based replication is 8.6.0. So most people are going to be on the 8.6.0 code base or higher uh, when going to policy-based replication. Uh, and so what you'll want to do is you'll want to get your system upgraded to 8.6.0 code. Do not go on to 8.6.1, 2, or 3. Those are non-long-term support releases, and they do not support global mirror and global mirror with change volumes. So, um, so if you have a system that is running global mirror and global mirror with change volumes, you'll want to uh, directly upgrade to long-term support release 8.6.0, uh, whatever. I'm at 8.6.0.4. Uh, or upgrade to 8.7.0. That will be uh, another version that supports Global Mirror and Global Mirror with change volumes. So uh, what we want to do here is take a look at our copy services and our partnerships and remote copies. And I do have a consistency group here called BG Test CG1. And it is um, a global mirror with change volumes. And I am at a 3600 second or a one hour cycling period. I am consistent copying on these. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get upgraded to 8.6.0.code. Since we're already at uh, 8.6.0.code, the next thing we need to do is we need to set up things for uh, policy-based replication. Now, this is not a video. It's not the purpose of this video to go over exactly how you set up, but I'll quickly go through um, the steps. If you have an existing partnership, which you would with Global Mirror, Global Mirror with change volumes, you'd want to go into the partnership properties on each system. And uh, so, uh, so source and target, you will see then this policy based replication and it will have a slider bar for you to enable it. And when you go to enable it, it will trade a certificate with the other system uh, in, in this uh, partnership. So in this case, I have taken the uh, certificate from SV2-1, and then I have to go to SV2-1 and enable it as well. Now, once you have these enabled, you will have uh, enabled your partnership for policy-based replication. Now, the other thing you have to do is on the pools, uh, you have to have on the pools on both sides, need a provisioning policy on them, as well as linking the pools between the system. Again, not my intent to go into that, but uh, once the pools are linked and once you have a provisioning policy on both sides, the only other thing you need to do is to create your replication policies. In this case, I have a replication policy called async5 that goes between these two systems, and I want to be warned if my uh, RPO is ever outside of five minutes. Okay, so on this one, I'm going to be warned if my RPO is ever outside of five minutes. On this particular one, um, I will be warned if my system is ever outside of a 60 minute RPO. So I want to, um, so I have those two replication policies on my system. So I am ready to do policy based replication. Now, one thing that's important to remember once I get my system upgraded, once I'm set up for policy based replication, if I have new things that I need to replicate, there's no sense in setting those up with global mirror and global mirror with change volumes. I'll want to set them up directly with policy based replication. So let's just pretend I have another application that I need to do replication with uh, other than the one that I'm doing replication with now. So I'm going to go into volumes and volume groups. I am then going to create a volume group. I'm going to call this BG test and I am going to uh, create an empty group.
Once I have my empty group created, I can go into that group, and instead of going to the volume screen, I'm going to create my volumes from this screen. This is sort of a microcosm of my um, volume screen, so I can take the action of creating new volumes here. Uh, and it will automatically create my volumes in this particular volume group. Uh, but before we create the volumes, and this is sort of important, before we create these volumes, uh, we're going to actually set up our replication policy on this pool. And the reason we're going to do that is that a, a uh, volume group with a rec replication policy, um, when I create the volumes, it will actually create the volumes on both sides and set them in sync automatically so that um, it does not have to uh, uh, initially copy from source to target. So what we're going to do is we're going to, as a best practice, assign our replication policy first. In this case, I'm going to set the async5 policy on this. Now what this is going to go out and do is it's going to go out to the other system. It's going to create me a volume group of the same name. It's going to take my policies over there to the other system that I've created on the system as well. And sometimes it takes uh, just a little bit of time for that GUI to refresh. But once the GUI is refreshed, uh, it will be in sync. So it's uh, I refreshed the GUI by going to one panel and back. But as you can see, um, I have replication set up between these two, but I now have no volumes in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my volume screen and I'm going to create new volumes. It's going to create volumes in this volume group. I'm going to define my volume properties and I'm going to create four of those. I'm going to call it BG test. And then I'm going to say these are 50 gigabytes apiece. And I'm going to start out with um, a, a suffix range of 1 to 4. And then I'm going to save that and create those volumes. Now, one of the things that you'll notice immediately once these volumes get created is the fact that um, is the fact that if I go to the policies page, you will see that I am zero seconds behind the production copy. The reason that this is is because I created the volumes in a volume group that had a policy on it. So because I created the volumes there, the system went out, created the volumes, created the relationships uh, and everything like that and set them to already in sync so that I didn't have to transfer 200 gigabytes of data from source to target. This can become important when you are like creating VMware volumes that could be 10, 15, 20 terabytes each, and you don't want to have to copy uh, 20 terabytes between source and target uh, for a volume that is empty. So now, as you can see, I have a volume group. It has volumes in it. Um, and uh, I am running. My recovery point is within policy. And if I come back here to my volumes, I can actually take these volumes and do everything to these volumes I could on the normal volume screen. So I can create, uh, I can add a map to a host or a host cluster. We can, um, you know, uh, do anything that we could do on the volume screen. We can do here on uh, this screen as well. Sometimes it's very helpful to do that because it's a microcosm of the whole. So as you can see, I do have some policy-based replication running here. I am, my recovery point is within policy, but I also have global mirror uh, with change volumes running on this system as well. So anything new, I'm going to want to set up with policy-based replication. That way it saves me from having to convert it later. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to convert existing global mirror and global mirror with change volumes to um, policy-based replication. Now, if you're using global mirror, uh, it's really easy because all I have to do is take those volumes, put them in a volume group, add a, a replication policy to that volume group. For global mirror with change volumes, it's a little more complex, not much though, but on a consistency group by consistency group basis, what I'm going to do, so I can do this one consistency group at a time. I don't have to convert everything at once or anything like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop my, uh, stop my group 
So I'll go ahead and stop my group. I don't need to allow secondary read write access. I can just stop my group. Once my group is stopped, I can go into that group. And now I need to delete the change volumes on the source side. The source cannot have change volumes on them in order for me to uh, convert to uh, policy-based replication. So if you're using a uh, global mirror with consistency protection or global mirror with change volumes, you're going to have to drop that change volume. So if I come into these, and of course you can script all these, I can go ahead and delete my master change volume on all these. So, um, so I'm going to go into the first one. I'm going to go into the second one and uh, delete my master change volume on this one as well. And uh, then on my third and fourth, of course, like I said, you can script this. Since I've only got four volumes, we're going to go through and do this by hand. And I'm going to delete this change volume as well. And then I'm going to go into the fourth one and delete the change volume there as well. Now what I'm going to do then after I get these change volumes deleted is I'm going to go into the group and I'm actually going to convert it to global mirror rather than global mirror with change volumes. So I'm going to edit the type. I'm going to say it's going to be global mirror but my cycling is going to be none. And I'm going to say OK. Now what this is going to do is this is going to change this one consistency group to actual global mirror instead of global mirror with change volumes. Then I'm actually going to start up the group. Uh, I'm going to start this group so that I have my target intact. So my targets are now intact. I am uh, replicating. I am consistent copying. I am uh, the copy type is global mirror and uh, and the like uh, and uh, normal global mirror. So now I'm back to global normal global mirror. My cycling mode is none and uh, and I am consistent copying. Now what I'm going to do is uh, first of all you need to know what your source volumes are. So CG source CG2 source 1 through 4. Okay? So I can go back here and then I can go to volumes and volume groups. Now what I'm going to do then is I'm going to create a volume group I'm going to call this BG CG2, and then I am going to choose existing volumes to go in this group. And I am going to choose these four source volumes uh, to go into this group and create the group. Now, I have these in, in the group, okay, and my global mirror is going on. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually add, assign a replication policy to this group. So I'm going to, since this is a 60 minute RPO, um, I, I'm going to assign my async 60 to this and then I am going to do that. Now it's going to go out, it's going to create me a volume group of the same name over on the other side. It's going to create me volumes of the same name over on the other side. Uh, it's also going to set up the relationships and it's going to start copying my data from source to target because uh, I have to really re-sync the data. But if you remember, uh, my global mirror is still going, so I still have a consistent point in time over there while I am doing this. So uh, notice that uh, it, uh, it took a while for the screen to refresh, but now that the screen is refreshed, it's, it's copying my data from source to target. If we come over here to this other system and take a look, um, So if we come over here into this other system and take a look at what's going on, um, what we'll see is this is totally automated. So if I go over to my volume groups, I can come over to my volume groups and I can see that I have a BG test over here that we created before. The system automatically set up those volumes over on this other side and these are my offline recovery volumes. If I go ahead and take a look at my BG CG2, um, that is created over here with my target volumes. Now once this data gets into sync, 
and we've got about 44 gigabytes remaining for that to happen. And once uh, these get in sync, I will be ready then to clean up my consistency group on Global Mirror. So we'll wait uh, here for a second or two for that to sync up. Uh, and then now I actually have two copies of my data over on the other side, one from Global Mirror and the other one from policy-based replication. So notice that now I am consistent over on the other side. I have zero, I am zero seconds behind the production copy and things like that. Now the only thing left for me to do is to go clean up my old global mirror. So I need to go out here to partnerships and consistency groups and I'm going to actually stop the group. So I'm going to stop this group. I am then going to delete the group so I'm going to delete the group and that will technically make everything that was in the group independent relationships. I'm going to take and I'm going to uh, select all four of those and I'm going to say I want to delete these relationships. So I've got four relationships that I'm going to delete and I'm going to delete them. Now I still have some cleanup work to do on the other side. And so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go to volumes and go to my volume screen. And I actually have all these source and change volumes, these uh, sources and targets and the change volumes um, and the like uh, that uh, need to be cleaned up. So if I um, come over here and uh, go to clean these up, the targets and the change volumes and I select all those and say I want to delete them and my eight volumes I'm going to delete and now um, I'm going to say yes we've got flash copy uh, mappings and we've got uh, those so I'm going to do that and we've then deleted um, those volumes. Now we have the only thing that we're left with are target volumes from our um, uh, policy-based replication. Now notice what you don't see here is you don't see all the change volumes even though they exist on the relationships. You see the target volumes but you don't see any of the change volumes on the source or the target side. But they're in the background protecting you uh, and things like that. So now when I come back here, I really don't have anything, uh, anything here. So what I can do then is once I get totally converted from global mirror and global mirror with change volumes to policy based replication, what I can do then is I can come over here to settings, GUI preferences, and I can turn off uh, the ability to display the remote copy functions. So if I don't, so I'm going to do that. So what's going to happen there is if I go to my copy services panel, you won't see anything there. You won't see anything to do with the old global mirror, global mirror with change volumes. Now you are just left with policy based replication. So again, I can go into volume groups. I can go back to my volume groups and I have my two volume groups running. Um, my recovery points are in uh, are within policy. Um, and if they ever get outside of policy, either one, it will throw an event on the system. Um, if I come into a particular volume group, I can see exactly how many seconds behind I am from the production copy. A lot more, uh, more to do there with policy-based replication, but there's other videos on that. This was a video just to sort of explain how you would go about converting a system from global mirror and global mirror with change volumes to policy-based replication. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope you have a wonderful day.